Good morning, good morning. And um, today we're actually going to pick up where we left off at yesterday. So yesterday we ended with John 10:10, 10, 10, which says, "The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly." Today we're picking up with that same verse and going on through verse 18. And the rest of that passage says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and he does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father, I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have the other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up. This charge I have received from my Father." So yesterday we wrapped it up talking about, we ended talking about the abundant life that God wants to give us and how as sheep following our shepherd, walking through that door, we can step into that abundant life. Today we're going to start with that verse because it's a promise that we can have life and have it abundantly because Jesus is the good shepherd. Um, what does a good shepherd do? Well, according to these verses, a good shepherd knows his sheep. And he will lay down his life for his sheep. He will die for his sheep. If one wanders off, he'll go find it. And he knows that there are other sheep out there that belong in his fold. And he goes and looks for them and brings them back into the fold. Um, Jesus, whenever he laid down his life, you know, that was a representation of the good shepherd, of the shepherd dying for his sheep, right? He didn't have to do it. He could have at any moment stopped that. Because he is God, he was God, and he always will be God, he could have stopped. He made a choice to lay down his life for, for you, for me, for each of us, so that we can step into this abundant life that he has promised us. Um, the good shepherd will lay down everything to protect his sheep. And there was four different that people are, are identities in here that I wanted to look at today. So we have the shepherd, we have the sheep, we have the hired hands, and we have the wolves. So the shepherd, the good shepherd is Jesus, right? So he is our good shepherd. But did you know that we're each, as believers, shepherd of people and items around us? What if our sheep are our children, or our grandchildren, or our marriage, or the people that we get to serve with and serve at church or our jobs, the people we come in contact with there, if you happen to be a student, the people you go to school with may be the sheep that are in your pasture. The people you interact with where you go is your pasture. And the people you're interacting with are sheep that God has given you a chance to be a shepherd for and to teach them and train them and love on them and meet them where they're at and show them his love just by the way you live your life. It's not about having to preach, but just by being there and loving people, we get to shepherd people. Um, so yes, Jesus is the good shepherd. He is the ultimate shepherd that we run to and we turn to, but we each are called to lead people that are in our lives, to share the gospel with the people around us. That doesn't require a degree. It doesn't require being called as a pastor, being uh, you know, anointed, appointed, commissioned, and all of that. Jesus commissioned us. He said, go into all the world and make disciples. He didn't say, hey, preachers, go into all the world. He said, you, my disciples, my people, my followers, go into all the world, make disciples, teach them, baptize them. So as believers, we are already commissioned to go out. So that makes you a shepherd. So what kind of shepherd are you? Are you a good shepherd that, not to take away from the good shepherd, guys, but are you a good shepherd that leads people and shares Christ and prays for people and loves on people? I mean, and maybe, you know, the words aren't there for you yet. And I totally get that. For a long time, I had a really hard time being vocal about my faith with people. But you can love people and meet them right where they're at. 
um, so that they can see Jesus in you um, as you live your life day to day. And then sheep. So what are the sheep? Well, in the Bible, in the passage, he's talking about us, right? The believers. But in your life, your sheep <clears throat> might be your children, your grandchildren, uh, nieces, nephews, your marriage. Um, you know, it could be the people that you work with. It could be your job. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Um, <clears throat> it could be any number of things that you come in contact with or that God has given you authority over in your life or that God has placed in your life. Like for me, you know, if I look at, at sheep in my life, my kids, definitely. So what kind of shepherd am I to my children? Um, am I teaching them? Am I training them in the ways of the Lord? Am I leading them and guiding them and loving them so that they see Christ? My grandson, uh, people that I get to work with at my my job at the Y um, are, are sheep that are in my path that I get to be able to share Christ with, even if it's just by loving on them and meeting them where they're at. Uh, it's an opportunity that God's given me. Your marriage could be a part of your sheep herd, uh, and taking care of that marriage could be a very important part of your job as a shepherd. So today, take some time and kind of figure out what is it you're supposed to be shepherding in your life? Who are the sheep in your life you need to take care of? And sometimes some sheep will come into your pasture and then they're going to leave. They won't stay. Um, but while they're there, it's your job to take care of them. So who are hired hands in this? Who are the hired hands um, in, in our lives? And you think about the Bible says that the hired hands are the ones who they're there because they're paid to be there. They're not connected to. They don't know the sheep. They don't love the sheep. So if a wolf comes, they're going to take off, right? Some of us have hired hands in our lives. We can think of people who have come and gone in our lives who were there for a season when things were good. But when you really needed them, you couldn't count on them. And they were out the door, whether, you know, that's people that we considered friends or that may be other people from, you know, our past, um, could be, some of us, it can be family that has jumped ship. Um, it could be friends. It could be job situations, different things where the person has left. Now the flip side of that is, and this is a little bit of a hard question. Where have you been a hired hand in somebody's life? So, you know, you're there, but then when they need you, you're not there anymore. So you're not as invested in their lives. And you're not going to be as invested in everybody's lives. That's just the reality. I mean, there are people that you're going to have in your, in your pasture that you're going to invest in. And then there are people when, that you're going to have that are peripheral that you're not. But people who come in and you don't get to know them but you invest in them somewhat, but then whenever the wolves come after them, you jump ship. Where has that been, and is there anywhere that you maybe need to repent? Um, maybe talk to some people and ask for forgiveness. This hit me really hard um, as I was studying it, um, that you know, a lot of the time we don't mean to, but we get so caught up in life that we drop the ball on some people, and you know, even though we could be there, we're not there. And then wolves, what would wolves in our lives be today? You know, we think a lot of the time when we think about wolves in our lives, we tend to think of false teachers and stuff, um, the big ones. And, and that's possible. That's always a possibility. And we definitely want to watch out for that in our lives as we listen to different people, um, read different books, whatever, as you're seeking to grow in your faith. Definitely test anything anybody's teaching you against the Word of God and make sure that it stands up to the Word of God. But... In this reference, we're talking about wolves in your daily life. And this could be people that come in and, and seek to steal your time. Um, you know, you have those people who are just time drainers. They, nothing is, you're never going to resolve anything with them. And, and it's the same thing. So, you know, they become time drainers. That can be wolves in your life that's taking your time away that you need to be using to shepherd somewhere else. Um, so that's one form of wolf. But another type of wolf in our lives can be our fears. 
The things that we're afraid of can hold us back from stepping into the abundant life that God has for us. Um, the anxieties that we have can cause us to stay away from the abundant life God has for us. And the doubts that we have can be another wolf in our life. And the wolves are something that we're going to have to trust the good shepherd to fight back. For us. You're going to have to run to the Good Shepherd, Jesus, who, and that's the title today, is the Good Shepherd. Run to the Good Shepherd so that he can meet you right where you're at in that moment, in that situation, and fight back off those wolves so that you can step into that abundant life. So today, we've learned that Jesus is the Good Shepherd that we are his sheep, but that we're also shepherds of our own sheep. And that can be our families, our ministries, our jobs, any number of avenues of people that we interact with. We've learned that sometimes we have hired hands in our lives, people that are not really going to get to know us and invest in us. And we also are hired hands in people's lives sometimes. And maybe that's all we're meant to be, but if we were meant to be more, we might need to do a heart check. And we've learned that wolves can come in many different forms that can be people that can be things anything that can take us away from God is a wolf in our life and guys that can even be activities that distract you from what God has for you so um, definitely do a check today to see where the wolves are in your life and what you might need to take to God to surrender to God and ask him to help you fight that wolf so we're going to pray um, I do want to my dear friend Tiffany's baby um, was born on Sunday and is in the hospital I would just like for you to join with me today as we pray for her and her baby. I'm not going to go into details, but God knows the need and he can touch and heal this precious baby. Daddy God, I come to you today and I thank you that you sent Jesus to be our good shepherd. Lord, that because we have him leading us, we can walk in the abundance of everything you have for us, Lord. And in that abundance is health and healing, and wholeness. And Lord, today I come to you, and I, I lift Bella to you, Lord, and I lift Tiffany and Jeremy to you, Lord, and I pray that you touch her little body, Lord, and you heal her completely from the tip of her head to the tip of her tiny little toes, Lord, and that you give mom and dad a peace that passes all reasonable understanding, Lord, that even as they're there in that NICU, Lord, that the nurses and the doctors will see the trust and the faith they have in you and be touched by that. That even now, they're pulling that energy from one another and Bella is feeling that faith in you. Lord, as you begin to touch and heal her body. Lord, I pray, Lord, that today you're with each person that's here, Lord, that you reveal those areas in our lives where we're not being good shepherds to the sheep that you've placed within us or where we've been a hired hand when we should have been more, um, Lord, and that we... We're willing to forgive the hired hands in our lives when we feel like they've let us down. Uh, Lord, I pray to you that you reveal the wolves in our lives that are keeping us from stepping into the abundance that you have for us. Thank you again for your son, Jesus, and for the, him being the good shepherd in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Have an amazingly blessed day, guys.